This story comes from 1001 Nights. There was a Shaw who wanted to be a good ruler. So one day he dressed in the simple robes of a traveler and went out among his people unrecognized so that he could get to know them better. In the heat of a dusty afternoon, he came to a well. There were three sisters talking and filling their buckets with water. Such a dream I had last night, said the eldest. I dreamed I married the royal baker and had all of the sweet cakes I wanted to eat. I dreamed I married the royal cook, said the next sister, and had all of the savory dishes I wanted. My dream was the best, said the youngest. I dreamed I married the Shaw. We had children as bright as the sun. And the sisters laughed, but the Shaw nodded his head thoughtfully. And a few days later, he summoned the sisters to appear before him at the palace. Of course, they did not recognize him, for now he wore his royal robes. You do not know me, he said, but I know your heart's desires. You, he said to the eldest, tomorrow you shall marry the royal baker. And you, he said to the next sister, you shall marry the royal cook. And you, he said to the youngest, you shall marry me. You will become my queen. We will have children as bright as the sun. And because his word was law, all of the weddings happened just as he said they would. <laughs> and for a while, all of the sisters were happy. But then the eldest two became jealous of their youngest sister, who was the queen. They plotted to destroy her happiness. Before the year was out, the queen gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. Her sisters attended her. But before the queen could set eyes on the babe, they took him and put him in a basket, cast him adrift on the stream that ran outside of the palace. And when they returned to the queen and the shah, they said, a boy, alas, he did not survive. There were tears in the shah's eyes. My mother groaned, my father wept, into this dangerous world I left. My father groaned, my mother wept, into this dangerous world I left. But the child was very much alive, and his loud cries summoned the attention of the old gardener and his wife, who lived downstream from the palace. They had long ago given up hope of ever having a child. But now Allah has blessed us with a son, cried the old gardener to his wife. The waters have brought him to us. They named him Bahman. Before the next year was out, the queen gave birth again to a beautiful baby boy. And a few moments later, a beautiful baby girl. Again, her sisters took the babes before the queen could set eyes on them put them in a basket and set them adrift on the stream. Twins, they said to the queen and to the shah, a boy and a girl. Alas, they did not survive. And now grief overcame the shah. He tore his hair. 
he rubbed his face with ashes. He blamed the queen. You, you are the cause of this misery, this grief that devours me. There are holes in my very bones. Hello. He blamed the queen. I can no longer bear the sight of you. And he banished her to a simple mud hut away from everything and everyone that she loved. But the children were very much alive. Their cries again summoned the old gardener and his wife. Allah has blessed us again and again with another son and a daughter. The waters have brought them to us. The flowers have created them. Beauty is written upon their cheeks. They named the boy Perviz and the girl Gulnara. <laughs> They raised the children with love and taught them everything they knew. And when the old gardener and his wife died, the children were not yet fully grown, but they knew how to care for each other and for the garden. One day, when Bachman and Perviz were out hunting, an old wandering wise woman called on Gulnara. Gulnara gave her a soft mat to kneel upon fresh melon from the garden, bread she had just baked. The old woman ate with trembling hands, as if she had not eaten for a long time. And then she thanked Gulnara. Because you have been kind to me, she said, I will tell you of three marvels. The first is a tree that never loses its leaves and grows more beautiful with each season. The second is a wellspring of shining water. It shines like gold and never runs dry. The third is a bird 
who sings so joyfully all of the other birds must join in. And this bird, too, can speak in words. I should like to see these marvels, said Gulnara. Where can I find them? Follow the camel track towards India, said the old woman, and disappeared beneath the low archway. When her brothers came home, she said, I have learned from a wandering wise woman about three marvels, a tree of all seasons, a never-ending fountain, and a marvelous bird. I will to go and seek these treasures. I will bring them back to you. No, said Bachman, this quest is too dangerous for a girl. I will go. And he mounted his stallion and set off. After 16 nights, when he did not return, Pervis said, Bachman is in danger. I must go. I will go with you, said Gulnara. It is my fault. He is in danger. No, said Pervis, this is too dangerous for you, little sister. I will go. And he mounted his stout-hearted mare and set off. After 21 nights, when he did not return, Gulnara knew what she must do. She filled a sack full of dates, and she mounted her stout-hearted, short-legged pony and set off on the camel track towards India. For 35 nights, she shivered under the glittering stars, and for 35 days, she traveled under the hot sun, until finally she came to what looked like a mountain of black rocks. There were her brother's horses grazing nearby. An old hermit sat at the foot of the mountain. Long life, she greeted him. Do you know of these three marvels, the tree of all seasons, the water of shining gold, the bird who sings and speaks? The marvels you seek are at the top of this mountain, said the old hermit, but those who go up do not come down again. I must go, she said. My brothers are there. Then go, he said, but do not listen to the rocks and do not look back at them. Gulnara wound a scarf about her neck to remind herself not to look back. She stopped her ears with wool to muffle the sounds, and she stuffed her cheeks with dates to keep herself from crying out. And she began to walk up the mountain. But the rock slid from underneath her as if they would carry her back down. And the sounds of the rocks, they were calling out, taunts and insults. Your brothers were liars and cowards. She kept walking, but their taunts and insults grew louder. They looked at us. They cursed us. A great rock broke off from above her and came rumbling so close to her she barely escaped it. You will be next, it rumbled at her. But she kept walking, 
And as the calls grew louder, shame, shame, worthless girl, she walked step after step until finally she came to the top of the mountain. And there she found a leafless stick, a muddy puddle of water, and a cage with a bird with drooping feathers barely managing a chirp. There is no magic here, nor are my brothers. But still, she picked off the leafless stick and hung the bird in the cage on the stick and filled her cup with water from the muddy puddle. And with tears in her eyes, she began to walk down the mountain. But she stumbled and some of the water from the cup spilled out. It sizzled on the rocks. A swirling mist appeared. And when the mist cleared, where there had been rocks, now there stood men. Two of these were her brothers. Bachman, Parviz, light of my eyes. <laughs> She continued down the mountain with her brothers. She was still carrying the stick, the cage with the bird, and the few drops of water left in her cup. What good are those things now? asked her brothers. We will see, said Gulnara. And when they reached their home, she went to the garden. She planted the leafless stick in the garden and hung the cage with the bird on it. The few drops of water left in the cup she poured onto the earth. Right away, a wellspring of shining water gushed up. It shone like gold in the sunlight. In the morning, the tree had transformed from the stick, and now it was loaded with green leaves and fragrant blossoms. The bird had fluffed his feathers and was singing with pure joy. All of the other birds joined him. Word of these marvels reached the palace and the shah wanted to see for himself. So again he dressed in the robes of a simple traveler and came to call on the children. They welcomed him. When he smelled the fragrance of the blossoms from the tree of all seasons, his troubled mind was cleared. When he drank from the everlasting fountain of shining water, his heart, which as it had been so heavy, was lifted. And when the birds sang, the grief that he had been carrying in his bones fell from him. Not even the Shaw has marvels such as these, he said, or children as bright as you. He does, if he will but believe his eyes and his ears. And the bird spoke in words that all could hear and told of how he had seen the queen's sisters take the babes when they were newborn, cast them adrift, on the stream how he had seen the gardener and his wife pull the children from the water 
and raise them with love. The Shah fell upon his knees before the children. I am the Shah and your father. I beg your forgiveness. Gulnara said, it is the queen whose forgiveness you must first seek. And when they appeared before the queen and she saw her husband's face so full of remorse and her children as bright as the sun, in that moment there was no room in her heart for anger and it was filled with joy. Never was there a more beautiful night than the night of their reunion.